My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I hope you want to make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. How's business holding up? Oh, no, I'm not talking about how COVID's impacting the economy or hopes for a better vaccine rollout or the possibility of another stimulus bill. After not so hot day, Dow shed 179 points. This will be lost 0.30%. NASDAQ inched up 0.09%. I actually want to take the temperature of real companies to see how they're handling one of the strangest moments I can ever recall. Well, we're going to find out next week when we hear from some of the most important companies in America. Sure, Intel and IBM reported yesterday, and they were significant enough to dent the Dow, but they're no longer the titans of tech that they used to be. These days, they're fighting for relevance. So what is my game plan? Well, we had a mini rotation into the consumer packaged goods names today, typically a slowdown that we see every time oil ticks lower. We're going to find out if that rotation continues after Kimberly Clark reports on Monday morning. Their last quarter was abysmal with this enterprise business crushed by COVID. Can Kimberly Clark turn things around? I say stay tuned. Tuesday gets rolling with Johnson & Johnson. Not only do I expect a fabulous quarter, I also think they might show some leg on the clinical trial of the century. They're one and done vaccine candidate that could take this country and make it, well, let's say back to somewhat like it is. Next, you know what's been quietly moving up? The left for dead General Electric. Why? I think it's because CEO Larry Culp has totally gotten his arms around the company, windmills and all. That's right. Even that division is doing well. If you believe, as I do, that travelers will start flying again once we get beat this virus, well, this one's for you. Speaking of travel, there's been lots of chatter that American Express could have a terrific quarter despite the lack of corporate travel. That's certainly how the stock's been trading. Again, maybe it's another one that's going to go back to, I don't know, what are we thinking, 2018, 2019? I don't know, but that stock's been acting well. How about dividend aristocrat 3M? Now, this one's tougher. 3M has some potentially major pollution related to liabilities, groundwater pollution, that could hit harder now that we have an environmentally friendly president. The business is improving, though. And if if not for that liability, I think the stock would be much, much higher. Let's see if management can convince us that the market's blowing this issue out of proportion. Hey, by the way, that's what DuPont did, and they were right. After the close, we hear from a Dickensian trio of Great expectation stocks, Mrs. Aversham. There's advanced micro devices. There's Microsoft and Starbucks. We own all three for our charitable trust. You can see all our moves before we make them by joining the ActionAlertsPlus.com club. Let's talk about these. I think Intel's disappointment last night could be good news for our rival AMD because AMD's done a much better job of breaking into the hottest categories with its chips that Intel's fallen behind. I'm predicting a blowout. Yes, they're still buying Xilinx, so that might put you a drag on the stock. Microsoft's been mighty quiet in recent months, but I think their business has been amazing. As for Starbucks, I worry because the stock's had a tremendous run without any sign of a turn in the United States. I say at this point now, you've got to wait to buy Starbucks until after they report if you want to own it. Maybe it trades below 100. I don't know. Wednesday, pastiche of macro and micro news, with Fed Chief Jay Powell announcing any potential policy changes. Probably none. Now, I bet he'll keep rates un- unchanged uh, because, remember, he wants to say low long, uh, maybe years. But that won't stop self-proclaimed experts from offering bogus interpretations of the Fed statement that will confuse you and make you sell things that you shouldn't. Let's hope these misguided Fed heads scare people into selling. You know why? That's going to create the buying opportunities that we want and some of the terrific companies that we're talking about that report on the same day. So let's start with Boeing on Wednesday morning. The 737 MAX is finally airborne. The orders are, tri- are well, they're trickling in. Let's leave it that way. But it, it's too soon to expect a great quarter because the airlines are still in survival mode. That said... For months, I've told you the Chinese government is parsing every word from Joe Biden's team. And if the new administration lowers the temperature, China will respond with massive aircraft orders. See, they actually need planes. Too soon to tell right now. But I suspect it won't be long. Abbott Labs reports. They've been working hard on COVID-19 testing, although they've yet to really mass produce the cheap at-home tests that the FDA proved that, that we all really want, right? We want to test that we check every single day so that we don't go to work if we find out that we're sick before we can infect. Abbott's going to make its name, though, this quarter with its blood sugar monitor, so I expect to beat and raise. After the close, we hear from Apple, Facebook, and Tesla. Facebook, Apple, fat? 
You're from five. Okay. Now, I'm starting to feel like they could, they're bunching up on purpose just to make my life difficult. You can't focus when they report at the same time. And Jimmy Chill likes to focus. I bet Apple will be indirect. I, I think it's going to be incredibly upbeat uh, about its entire product line. Not just the, the iPhone 12, which does take remarkable pictures. They're cleaning up thanks to the stay-at-home economy and the service revenue stream should keep growing too. The one wild card is currency. Apple has left so much money on the table because of the strong dollar, but the greenback got much weaker this quarter. I think that is going to matter. You won't even realize it, but that's going to be a major change. I'm expecting an amazing quarter from Facebook. I'm probably the only one who is. But given the fact that so many small and medium-sized businesses rely on them for advertising, I think it's it's going to be the real deal. If management says anything about monetizing their other businesses, I think the stock can challenge new highs. They tend not to. I don't mind their calls. It's gotten a little political of late. As for Tesla, their conference calls used to be top-tier entertainment. It was Fallon. It was Kimmel. It was more Kimmel. But if Elon Musk doesn't get too bored, you're going to hear some fantastic commentary to go along with fantastic numbers. We know Tesla's doing well because they give us so much information each month, we can already piece it together. Thursday morning, we get results from McDonald's, which the analysts have really been dumping on lately. If you notice that, they all like Chipotle. I don't blame them. It's more better to eat at Chipotle than McDonald's. Just one man's opinion. Right now, McDonald's is trading like a quarter will be a bad one. Uh, you know what? I think it's too negative. MasterCard and Visa both report, too. These companies are multi-hundred billion dollar companies. And while we own MasterCard for the charitable trust, I'm actually getting concerned that PayPal may be eating their, their uh, how about their lunch? Still, we're sticking with it because MasterCard could tell a tremendous story once cross-border travel comes back, obviously hurt by the pandemic. Earlier this week, I gave you a basket of 5G stocks. It included Skyworks Solutions, which makes chips for smartphones. Skyworks reports on Thursday night, and I am telling you, I think it's going to be a blowout. Plus, you don't need to worry about the Chinese exposure anymore because uh, you're not going to pick up. You're not going to see a Trump tweet that says, uh, you know, my good friend Xi, I hate you. Friday's usually a resident, but not this year. We got Honeywell, Chevron, Caterpillar and Eli Lilly. I mean, guys, get to social distance these reports. I expect good things. All four. Honeywell's got a new building solutions as a service business model. They call it Honeywell as a service. Okay. Their intelligent wor- uh, wor- warehouse division is amazing. The aerospace division, it well, isn't ready to roll yet because of the pandemic, but boy, it's going to be good once we get herd immunity. I think Honeywell's fantastic. That's Darius the damn check at the helm. Caterpillar's a quandary for me. Stock goes up even if the numbers aren't that good because there's so much hope for big infrastructure bill and better relations with China. I miss this move, though. It's not. I shouldn't even be able to opine on it because I left 60 points on the table. Now, oil has been on a roll. By the way, it's good for cat, which means it's worth owning some Chevron up here. You know, I think the world of Chevron. Mike Worth is really the big think guy in the, uh, other than Scott Sheffield in the whole group. Remember, I think most of the oils are investable, but Chevron and Sheffield's pioneer are the exceptions. Finally, Eli Lilly ramped up so much on vaccine hopes uh, that the stock may do, be due for a breather. Remember, that's, they're, they're kind of they're using a, a drug that they hope it seems like it wards it off. But remember, they're really trying to be more therapeutic. But the pipeline is spectacular here. Uh, with superb COVID drugs, and then, of course, why are people buying it? What's the Sotovoce Voce story? Alzheimer's. Yes. Any more commentary on Alzheimer's, biggest unmet need, will move the stock to 210. Now, I know many of you will be caught up in the nitty-gritty of Biden's stimulus push on Capitol Hill. That's not a sideshow. $1.9 billion stimulus bill could make a huge difference for a host of industries, from retail to the automakers, think used cars and dollar stores. But let me give you the bottom line here. Next week, I want you to keep your eyes on the prize. Companies with great earnings, especially when their stocks get knocked down to unreasonably low levels thanks to COVID worries that one day may no longer be front and center. I need to go to David, my old home state of Pennsylvania. David. Jimmy Chill. Yo, chill man in the house. All right. So since last spring, you've been very bearish on this stock. And for good reason. Both you and I have been burned by it once before. But given the impending reopening of the hospitality sector, notably restaurants, and a Biden administration that is friendlier to China, Tyson Foods is off of its 52-week high by 27%, has a P.E. ratio around 11, and yields a healthy dividend of 2.67%. Do I have horse sense? Is it time to buy TSN? Megan, you have horse sense or horse meat? Okay, here's the problem. I think Tyson uh, is the right play for all the things you mentioned. 
but they have systematically dropped the ball. I will give them this, though. This stock, hug, stock does do well in the 60s. I like your thinking. It did burn me. We lost money for action alerts. I, ta- I didn't want to look back, but everything you said, sir, is true. David in Pennsylvania does indeed have horse sense. Uh, can we take Brian in New York, please? Brian. Jimmy Chill, a big booyah to you from Long Beach, New York. Long Beach. I'm here. I'm in, um, I don't know, some part of some county, Jersey. What's up? <laughs> My some county is, doesn't have fine. vaccines. I'm in a vaccineless <laughs> county like all the other counties. <laughs> Same here, man. Uh, boot Barn, symbol boot. I bought initially after you had the CEO Jim Conroy on about two years ago. Been enjoying the ride since. They report on Monday, and I'm wondering uh, about your thoughts about boot going forward. Well, you know what? We caught those guys last time. It dropped to 30. I don't even know what the heck was doing down there. And uh, Matthew Boss, the best in town, uh, the GOAT of the group from uh, J.P. Morgan, said, Jim, this is going to be a great quarter. Of course it was. You know what? I think it's going to be again. Those guys, those guys are money. They're money. I mean, they're not Kathy Wood, okay? Right? Okay. All right, look, next week, I want you to keep your eye on the prize. Man, tonight, as e-commerce sales continue to surge, am I an under-the-radar way to play the trend that's environmentally friendly? And I know you want that. I'll reveal the name when I sit down with the CEO just ahead. Then ARK Investment was one of the fastest-growing fund managers in 2020. But could the rapid rise in popularity of Kathy Wood's group continue? Well, I don't know. And how about the COVID-19 pandemic? Is it impacting regional bank or not? I'm going to sit down with the CEO of First Horizon, inexpensive stock. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.